Thank you to Coach PJ for joining the podcast tonight. Let's talk about the RMAC, the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. For those of you not familiar, get with it. A lot of good football in this conference, the most notable being Colorado School of Mines, who's made back-to-back runs at the national championship game. Uh, the Ordiggers over there big time. you got some big-time schools like Western Colorado, CSU Pueblo, that are looking to make some noise this year along. You got on the list in that conference, but those two definitely come to mind right away. They made some uh, kind of some big news, I guess big Maybe I might have the right word for it, but interesting news. You know, definitely that at their kind of media day, if you will, this past week. And, uh, you know, the first minute of this video I'm about to show here, week zero is what they talk about. It's, you know, that being endorsed everywhere in D2, which, of course, this is the first year that uh, D- Division Two football will have week zero across the board. Not just the RMAC, though. So I fast forwarded to the part that makes the RMAC a little bit different. And uh, before I talk about it, I guess I'll have... Uh, the people associated with the conference itself go ahead and uh, tell you what's going on. But beginning in 2026, the RMAC uh, Athletic Directors President's Council have approved a standard buy in week six, beginning in 2026, in week six, where all teams will have a buy. This is placed strategically into the middle of the season in order to give our student athletes a break If you're Colorado School of Mines the last two years making runs to the national championships, you're playing up to 15, 16 weeks straight. That's a tough run for our student athletes in a very challenging and difficult sport physically. So we have strategically placed this bye week and it will also require our student athletes to have at least three days in that week off from their countable athletically related activity. This was proposed by our student athlete health and safety committee. It was supported by all of our athletic trainers, our administrators, and our president's council. So we're excited to announce that opportunity in 2026. All right, you get the gist right there, right? So starting in 2026, he, he, the first part of the video that I kind of skipped forward was him talking about week zero and how uh, teams are more than welcome to utilize week zero and utilize a buy, whatever. But And that goes into 2025. It's going to be the same thing as next year. But as soon as 2026 hits, you're getting a bye week in week six, whether you like it or hate it or, or otherwise. And I have mixed feelings on this. The obvious one, though, is what he just talked about, right? If you are a team that is going to the national championship, uh, you know, going to that game like Colorado School of Mines has done the last two years, you're playing 15 weeks. Like, there's so much physicality that goes into the sport that playing for that long is just absurd. And that's the people have talked about too uh, at the division one playoff, right? When you expand this bracket, you're playing more and more and more football just to get to the national championship. There's good and bad that comes with both sides of that argument, but that is what's going on there. It's 2026. Every team in the conference is a mandated by week during week six of their season. So week six of the season in 2026 and moving forward, there will not be any, RMAC football. There'll be no teams from that conference playing games. And so it feels really odd. And the next part of that is he talks about three days off from football activities or athletic countable related activities. I think it was the verbiage kind of, you know, that he used in that sentence uh, for the athletes during that week. So they need three days of nothing. That, that was my, I guess, my first big question. What are these athletic, I use air quotes here. If you're listening, I'm using air quotes. What are these quote unquote athletic or football activities? Obviously practice, right? That means three days without practice. But is that three days without lifts, without walkthroughs, meetings, film study? Like, what exactly does that mean? And I'm sure somewhere they've got to be at least meeting about that, or maybe they've already decided and I haven't seen that, and that's on me. If that's the case, I'll come right out and say that. But I think there definitely needs to be some more specificity there because, uh, you know, say it's not practice. I I know a lot of coaching staffs that will keep them boys in the meeting room all day and and make sure you you study film for that uh, next opponent, whoever that, uh, that may be. But... The obvious one, though, I, I like the idea of having it during week six. It's a great time for the kids to get a break, you know, halfway through the year, uh, especially if you're a team that plans on going to make a run in the playoffs, which, you know, hopefully all of them are, right? Um, but, you know, kind of on the other side, though, why mandate it? it? It feels odd, you know, to decide for coaches when their buy is because as a head coach of a football program at this level, like, you really are in charge of a lot of what goes on scheduling-wise and making those connections and trying to get those deals done. And so when you mandate you know, this specific date, the specific block of your schedule for the year, and now you're told that you have to have a buy here, you cannot have any leniency or flexibility, that might even make scheduling harder knowing you can't use that date, if that makes any sense, right? To me, it kind of feels a little bit odd in that regard, but 
again, I think that the payoffs are probably a little bit more important than that. And I am, I, I definitely am, am backing this in the sense that it makes a lot of sense um, to have that a bye week in some way mandated because there are a lot of teams that won't utilize a bye week that'll just you know go right through it, and that you know that that could be pretty detrimental for uh, for the student athletes. But there was more news. From the RMAC, talking about some of the other additions uh, or changes, I guess, rather, they'll be making when it comes to uh, football this year in 2024, this fall. And uh, the RMAC Director of Football Officials, Candy Campbell, he announced some rule changes in place for the upcoming season. A couple of them here, I'll just go through and list them. The first one's pretty interesting five tablets on each sideline assisting coaches in determining whether to challenge a call. And so obviously at the conference level, if you make a rule like this where uh, instant replay is a great example where the MIAA, the Gulf South, I believe the RMAC and the GLIAC have all implemented instant replay. Um, obviously they have because we got the tablets coming in now. But that was something that if you're going to mandate that at the conference level, you have to make sure those facilities, that equipment, all like everything that is required to run that is available at all your member schools inside of that conference. So uh, you might think that's not that big of a deal, but five tablets on each sideline for a D2 squad that you can go and, and use to assist in challenging a call, you know, for a coach to come to the sideline and see a replay of something on a tablet and say, hey, that ain't worth it. I'm keeping the red, you know, challenge flag in my pocket. That's pretty sweet. Another one, you've got uh, the two-minute timeout, not – the two-minute warning, even though it is literally apparently just implementing the NFL's two-minute warning at the end of the uh, second and fourth quarters. So another little break there that will break up the timing of games a little bit. We'll see how that affects different offenses, and that's more of a game-planning thing. Like You obviously game-plan different drives or plays or series around uh, when you know you have breaks in the time, especially when you're trying to make late drives in the half. But uh, some other ones, I think these are more minor changes. Uh, horse collar tackle is now illegal everywhere in the field, including inside of the box. That's something that, you know, kind of varies, but definitely something that they will uh, be taking and keeping a closer eye on. And then halftime doesn't start until the referee announces that halftime is starting. I Apparently that's worthy enough. But um, really, though, it's just the five tablets on each sideline. I think that is really cool. The fact that they can uh, start to really get into that and embrace that side of football, I think is really neat, especially the Division Two level. We just don't see enough of that. I think it's just a cool added element to small school football. But enough of that. Enough talking about the RMAC. 